Hello, everyone. My name is Linda Lee with the U.S. Census Bureau. I would like to welcome everyone to today's podcast on the Economic Census, where we learn about economic business data and how you can be a part of measuring our economy. Speaking of business data, in addition to the Economic Census that we will be diving into in a moment. We have other surveys that collect business data, releasing on varying frequencies. We have data releases on an annual basis. Annual programs are smaller in scope than the economic census, but can provide the most up-to-date trend. Two examples are the county business patterns and the annual retail trade survey. And a little side note: if you like podcasts, we have a recording on the retail sector that you can listen to. We also have more timely data releasing on a quarterly and monthly basis, such as construction spending and the monthly retail trade report. Now, in addition to these releases, we have something that we call high-frequency releases. These are data that are released on a bi-weekly basis. One that comes to mind is the Small Business Pulse Survey. This is a survey that was released on a bi-weekly basis to measure the health of businesses. And the recovery effort during the coronavirus pandemic, and due to popularity, the successor survey called the Business Trends and Outlook Survey now collects and releases business data on a biweekly basis. All right, so with that, let's meet our guest today. We have with us two of my colleagues from our outreach program area, Mr. Charles Brady and Ms. Carrie Kleindins. Both Chuck and Carrie have an extensive amount of experience with the economic census. Chuck and Carrie, it's a pleasure to have the both of you here today. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Now, Linda, you just mentioned the monthly retail trade survey, and what I always remind people is that when you're watching the news and they say retail sales are up X percent for the month, that's the Census Bureau. That's a good point, Carrie. I'm not sure many people knew that. This is helpful for many people to know. It's connecting the dots on how each piece contributes to the measuring of America's economy. So I have to say that I'm excited to have you both here today to share information on the economic census. Although we work in outreach, the both of you specialize in respondent outreach. Now, this is quite different than my area, where our primary focus is to help data users find data for their research needs. It can be quite different at times, but we have the same goals in mind. We're both trying to help the business community, whether it's helping them find data or helping navigate response to our surveys, and we really enjoy these opportunities to work together. Oh, thank you, Chuck. I enjoy working with your team as well, and you're absolutely right about the business community being the core group that we serve. And we both have another goal in common, which is to make respondents that could also be potential data users aware of the economic census, as well as encourage responses. I'm happy to have both of you share with our listeners your experience and the importance of participating in the survey. So, with that in mind, Carrie, can you share with our listeners what is the economic census? Well, as most people know, the Census Bureau counts the population every ten years. But people might not know we also count businesses every five years. The economic census is our largest and most comprehensive survey of businesses. We will mail to just over four million employer businesses in the U.S. and we'll publish statistics at the national, state. County and even city level for almost all industries. Wow, that's quite a feat. So you mentioned around four million businesses. Is the economic census similar to the decennial census, where every business would receive an invitation to respond? Okay, so it's not. But two things. Let me start by saying that's a great question and an important one. It does not go to every business. Data from over eight million employer business locations are represented. In the economic census, but to reduce burden on the business community, not every business is contacted. As I mentioned, approximately four million business locations receive letters requesting their response, and for the remaining four million small businesses, administrative records are used in lieu of direct reporting. The economic census only goes to employer businesses, meaning those businesses with paid employees. We have a separate program for statistics for businesses without employees, like independent contractors or people who are self-employed. It is fittingly named non-employer statistics because they are not employers, and also some industries are excluded from the economic census because that data is collected from other federal agencies. For example, agriculture and education. Okay, so now the second thought sparked from that question. I think it's really interesting that you called it an invitation to respond because we don't mail forms anymore. It's a mandatory online-only survey. 
The exception to that is for island area territories. Oh, exception? So what happens with the island areas? For the island territories, they are initially getting just a letter to respond online, but they can also request a paper form. I mentioned it is mandatory if you receive one, but I always like to add that Title 13 of U.S. Code is what makes your response required. But it also requires the Census Bureau to keep your responses confidential. Anything else to add, Chuck? Yes. Any employer business with more than one location will receive one. For all the other businesses with only one location, we sample them to reduce the burden on the small business community. Those selected represent other small businesses. Their participation ensures results are representative and reflect the diversity and dynamic nature of small business. Oh, and at companies with more than one location, surveys are sent to the company headquarters or some other company appointed contact. So if you don't receive one, there's a reason. Don't be worried. Oh, so what I'm hearing is that if I am a small business owner, I may or may not get an invitation. That is good to know. So if the business next door to mine gets an invitation and I don't, I won't have to worry that my invitation may have gotten lost. Now, with that being said, I know in the past mail-outs meant physically mailing out a letter with the official U.S. Census Bureau letterhead and envelope. With everything being digital nowadays, Chuck, do businesses still receive invitations the same way? To start, yes, we still mail the initial letter with all the official markings on both the letter and the envelope. However, in recent years, we've started to make more use of email correspondence. I see. So every business would receive a physical letter in the mail, and some would receive emails. Then reminders are sent electronically. Well, reminders are also sent in the mail if the respondent still prefers paper correspondence. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. That's a good thing to help ensure that the messages are delivered and the ability to choose electronic messages over the physical mailings is a nice option for many people. Now, in my area, we receive a lot of communication from both data users and respondents on the legitimacy of the survey. Is there a way for business owners to know that what they receive is legitimate? I'll take this one. This is a common question for all of our surveys, and you can go to census.gov verify to learn more about what to look for. Some examples are the presence of a census.gov domain, and specifically for this survey, the envelope will have a Jeffersonville, Indiana return address because we use our processing center located there. You know, Carrie, these are very important things to know and reassuring for everyone that it is a real effort to measure the economy. Well, this is all great information you're sharing today. Now, if I am being perfectly honest with you, when I am out talking with businesses at conferences and trade shows, People are often surprised to hear that the Census Bureau has business data. With the economic census being the most comprehensive source, is it a relatively new survey? No, it's been around in some versions since 1810 when it was just the first census of manufacturers and conducted as part of the 10-year population census by U.S. Marshals. As the economy grew more complex, it expanded to include retail and wholesale trade, construction, mining, and service industries. Ah, that sounds like quite a history, and great to know for anyone analyzing time series and may need historical references. Now, normally I would crack some joke about how long Chuck has been working on the econ census, but since we're recording today, I'll refrain this time. Well, I'm sure he appreciates that. Now, with such a rich history, what type of data can you find on the economic census, and are there other uses of this data? Among the information we collect and publish are number of locations, sales, payroll, and number of employees for over 21,000 geographies down to the place or town level, covering over 1,000 industries. I should also mention some of the new industries and products we added for 2022, such as business technologies like the use of robotics, the practice of telemedicine, and the sale of cannabis or cannabis-related products. And there are many ways it is used. Most importantly, it is a key input into the national accounts, such as the gross domestic product, and serves as a benchmark to other economic surveys, like the ones you mentioned in your introduction. It's also used at the state and local level for economic development and emergency planning. And of course, all the statistics from the economic census are free and available to use online by individuals and businesses. Hmm. So that sounds like the data has a lot of impact on how the economy is measured on both state and local levels of government, affecting our lives behind the scenes. Now, I know you've interacted with many of our respondents. 
Do you have a favorite story related to the survey that you could share with us today? Yes. Can I go first, Chuck? Sure. My favorite story is actually from a family friend of mine. When I saw her recently, she was asking about my work, and she shared with me that she's used our data to help her with a recent business move. She was an established veterinarian in one state and then wanted to move to another to be closer to her family. So she used both our household and business data to decide which county she should open her new clinic. And the scenario I like to reference is when we periodically conduct research with the small business community to inform our outreach strategies. More often than not, the most skeptical participant, one who did not know we have economic data, hears our story and becomes the most ardent supporter in the room. It's fascinating. It validates our efforts to get the word out about our data and all our response promotion efforts. Wow, those are great stories. They show the impact on our communities from an individual level all the way to spreading the word on the importance of the survey. Well, now that you've given us a glimpse into the importance of the economic census and many wonderful uses, I just need to know, so what's next? We began with a mailing to some businesses at the end of October, asking for an update or confirmation of their kind of business classification. The majority of the 2022 economic census will be mailed at the end of January and due on March 15th. Chuck, so you mentioned classification. What is classification? Just the primary industry the business is involved in. For some small businesses, we want to ensure that we have it right, so we ask in advance of the main mailing. Oh, I see. Well, if the main mailing isn't until January 2023, then why is it called the 2022 Economic Census? Great question, Linda, and we hear it all the time. It's because we capture the business activity taking place in 2022. Right now, we're focusing on raising awareness of this effort, so it's not a surprise when it lands in people's mailbox or inbox. Hmm, that makes sense. So this is a lot of great information for our listeners today. I'm sure many people would like to learn more about what's coming down the road, how they can help measure America's economy, and the richness of data that can help in making business decisions. Would you be willing to join us again to provide updates and help our audience learn more about the economic census as things progress? We'd love to. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us today. Looking forward to chatting again soon. Wonderful. And thank you both for being here today to share with our listeners the importance of responding to the upcoming 2022 economic census. I am looking forward to our next opportunity to get together and share updates on our data collection efforts. Now, before we go, I want to call everyone's attention to other resources that we have available to you. The Exploring Census Data webinar series is a set of webinars presented by topics such as services, healthcare, construction, and retail sectors. They are posted on our website, census.gov, under two locations. You'll be able to find the recordings under our learning resource page called the Census Academy and also under the Economic Census main page. In addition to these webinars, our guests today, Chuck and Carrie, will be hosting a webinar about the Economic Census in February, where you'll be able to take a deeper dive and learn more about the survey. To learn more about the Economic Census and other economic products, please visit our site, census.gov forward slash econ, where you will be able to explore our data and discover the possibilities. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at 1-800-923-8282 or send us an email to ask.census.gov.